The final section of notes for The Nation Divides in Two unit is the effects of the American Civil War. So let's take a look at a few ways that the Civil War changed our nation and affected American life. First of all, women started to fill new roles. In the absence of men, women in the North and the South took over the jobs previously done by men. And this is a theme that it comes up quite often in war and with the aftermath of war. Women were put in charge of managing plantations and family farms. They worked in factories. They had to replace the positions or fill the positions that men had left to go off to war. And they went to work in the medical field as nurses. So here are some images of women working as nurses and women working in factories making ammunition. And um, it's interesting because society in these times typically held women back and held them out of these positions. But when the war come, came, uh, then they can fill those positions. But when the war ends, then they're, mis they're displaced again. So it's kind of a, a sad cycle that women have to deal with. And women during the Civil War were also impacted by the same type of issues. Secondly, Northern blacks, um, their lives were changed. In 1862, Congress decided to allow blacks to enlist in the military. And by the end of the war, over 200,000 blacks had served in the Union forces, with more than 40,000 black soldiers dying in the war. And so that made um, the nation see that blacks, African Americans, could serve in the military could be given orders and follow them and they were hard, you know fighters and fighting for the nation so it brought up questions of what do these people um what do they deserve what should how should they be repaid and what should their position in society be and so here are some images of of soldiers serving and uh fighting against the confederacy Third of all, thirdly, um, there were a lot of economic changes in this nation. The war changed the economies of both the North and the South. The Southern economy was completely destroyed because most of the fighting happened in the South. Complete, like total cities were totally destroyed, like Richmond, Petersburg, and Savannah, and um, any kind of or any kind of uh, transportation that was in the South, be it rail or road or even canals, they were just obliterated. Uh, the rails going to Atlanta were twisted and looked like pretzels. Um, basically, there was no, no recovering for these cities without a lot of investment. The North blockaded the South. They cut off the trade with Europe, with, with France and England, and so the South couldn't sell their cotton and those buyers went elsewhere so those relationships had to be rebuilt uh, the north economy became a lot stronger it grew because there was very little fighting done in the north there wasn't a lot of destruction in the north and um, the north became reliant on their own supply channels to get the materials that they needed for factories Large population in the north allowed factories and farms to keep on producing, and both sides used an income tax during the war to raise money to support the war. That means that if somebody earns money at their job, they have to pay a small amount or a large amount to the government, and um, that raises money for the government to buy equipment, pay military uh, people, build weapons, all of that. The war also caused inflation in both the North and the South. That means that the dollar that the, each side used became worth less and less. So it costs more and more to, um, to buy your goods. And income tax is a tax on yearly earnings, and inflation is a sharp, steady rise in prices. Here are some images of Atlanta. It was destroyed by General Sherman. So you can see where there were buildings, they were just blown to pieces. Um, artillery during the Civil War was really perfected, if you could say it can be perfected. But, uh, it was, really was improved, the lethality, the deadliness of artillery grew. 
Fourthly, political affairs really changed after the Civil War. Um, the draft was issued. It's a process of selecting people for required military duty. So people were told, you're going to go serve in the Civil War, or you're going to go serve in the Union Army or the Confederate Army. And that was pretty new for the Americans. So um, toward the middle of the war, both sides began to have trouble recruiting people to join the military. People weren't volunteering, or there weren't enough volunteers. And so in 62, the South began using the draft, and in 63, the North began using the draft. Uh, there would be people in charge of getting these draftees to come and show up for, uh, for the Army, and you had to go. And there were certain ways to get out of it, which caused even more problems, uh, but basically you had to go. Um, in 1863, people living in New York City, they didn't like the draft. They didn't even like the war. They did not support the Civil War, and they didn't support Lincoln, and they didn't support the draft. And so on July 13th, mobs in New York began rioting. They burned buildings. They pulled down buildings. They cut telegraph lines. Uh, they looted stores. And it took the army, the Union Army, to come in and put down this, dra this draft riot. And there were draft riots all over the country in different ways that people protested the draft. Um, <clears throat> and like it says there at the end, the draft in the North did not work very well because there were so many different ways to fight against the draft. And it, w it was just so unpopular. Um, let's see here. Lincoln battles opposition. Many people in the North didn't support the war, and so it was a constant struggle for the North, for Lincoln especially, to get people to buy into the war. Um, he did things like suspended habeas corpus. That's the protection from being illegally jailed. He said, hey, in times of war, you don't get a trial by jury, or you're going to just sit in jail for a while. So... Um, you know, he, he did things, the government did things that were not popular and were not constitutional, really. But in a time of war, things are different. And um, it's win at all costs. Letter C there says, Lincoln wins re-election. He was re-elected in 1864, and he wanted to help heal the nation. He called this plan for the recovery of the nation Reconstruction. And his plan was to offer amnesty to all Southerners who swore loyalty to the Union. He wanted to be kind to the South. He wanted to bring the nation back together. Um, he wanted peace. But, sadly, on April 14th, he was assassinated in Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. And the guy who killed him was named, is named John Wilkes Booth, and... Um, Later on, he's killed by soldiers. He's um, he's captured and killed. And with the death of Lincoln, really the the goal, the the peaceful resolution of the America of the Civil War is just not going to happen. Reconstruction turns out to be a real failure. Reconstruction is a disaster for the South and the North and our nation as a whole. Here's Ford's escape. You can see the map of where he's riding to. There are people that are had supported John Wilkes Booth and helped him to carry out the assassination. Now, Reconstruction. The definition is a period of time after the American Civil War that deals with the rebuilding of the United States. So, um, a lot of things have to happen. The nation, physically, cities need to be rebuilt. As far as the government goes, new people have to be elected that are loyal to the Union. And a whole mentality, the mindset of people has to change. So, President Johnson, who takes over after... Um, Abraham Lincoln, he begins the policy of Reconstruction. He grants amnesty to those who swear loyalty to the Union. He names temporary governors for the southern states. He orders southern states to hold conventions to write new constitutions. 
and he asks states to propose and ratify the 13th Amendment, which outlaws slavery in all of the United States. Now, he has to fight against a Congress, though, that's full of radical Republicans or members of Congress who want to punish the southern states for the Civil War. So they want to punish. They want to make the South pay in any way possible. Um, and the South sees that as a real threat. They see that um, the slaves, the former slaves, are to blame for all of this. They, this war was fought over slavery, and their way of life was destroyed. And so, the South does a lot of different things to punish the blacks. So it all rolls downhill. There's punishment all the way down. There's anger. There's hatred that just spreads throughout the South. And for a variety of reasons, Reconstruction is considered an epic fail. So um, Southern blacks suffer discrimination and um, in a lot of ways. First of all, the Southern states didn't give blacks the rights that they were, were um, promised by the Constitution and by the amendments that were passed. They got around the 13th Amendment or the, the, the outlawing of slavery by black codes. And black codes are laws that sharply limited the rights of blacks. The laws made it hard for blacks to own property, earn a living, get a job, get an education, and especially it made it very difficult for them to vote. And if the if blacks were not allowed to vote, they didn't have a voice in the government. And so the government would do what it wanted, what benefited the government, and not the blacks. Um, Johnson clashed with Congress in three different ways. The Freedmen's Bureau was this group of people that was set up to help blacks in the South. It helped provide education, medical care, and other help to blacks. And under this program, hospitals and schools were set up to help blacks. Um, so this is showing that, you know, the South is just doing anything that they can to limit the power and the freedom of blacks. And so Johnson has to address each of these issues individually. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 was passed to give citizenship and rights to blacks. And Johnson vetoed the bill, actually. Um, Congress, though, he over, or Congress overruled the presidential veto, and both laws were enacted, and that again protected rights of the blacks in the in the South, freed blacks for, or freed men to this point. Uh, the Fourteenth Amendment was passed, and Congress proposed it in order to in order to give citizenship to to freed men. And the problem is that once these people that were slaves were freed, they weren't really considered citizens. And so this covered all of these people that were freed, made them citizens, and then gave them all the rights protected by the Constitution. Uh, Johnson, President Johnson, worked very hard to get the southern states to defeat the amendment. They did not vote for it, and it was defeated. It took uh, a few more years to get it ratified in 1867. And so it seems like Johnson really worked against Reconstruction because he worked against the radical Republicans and he worked against trying to punish the South. So Congress didn't like what the president was doing. They tried to impeach him, and he was uh, put on trial in the Senate, as you know how the impeachment process works, and he was found not guilty and allowed to remain in office. He was the first president to be impeached, but he was found not guilty. After Johnson took over the presidency after Lincoln's assassination, he did not serve another term, and uh, he was instead replaced by General U.S. Grant. He won the presidency in 1868, and he became the 18th president. Under his presidency, the 15th Amendment was proposed and ratified, which said that no state can deny a citizen the right to vote based on race. And there were a lot of different changes that came in the South. During Reconstruction, uh, blacks were allowed to take part in government here and there, you know, as far as long as the black codes did not prevent it or curtail it. Um, so blacks held positions in government. They were allowed to um, run and serve in state and federal governments. And even though many Southern whites didn't like these new governments and they didn't like blacks serving the government, still there were a lot of different times and places where blacks did serve in the government. Uh, the South have, had to deal with carpetbaggers. These are people, northerners, that went south for a lot of different reasons. 
um, they carried these small suitcases made of cloth that looked like carpets, and they had three different goals. First of all, northern business leaders wanted to take advantage of the hard economic times. They bought plantations for really cheap. They opened businesses for extremely cheap, or they bought mines from southerners that couldn't afford to keep them anymore. The economy was in shambles, and so people from the north that had money they could go there and they could live like kings, basically. Uh, some went as teachers and they wanted to help educate former slaves or they wanted to educate, re-educate the South, uh, Southern people to think more like they're part of the United States again. And also, Northerners went to become government workers. There were tax collectors that were sent, customs officials, and other types of positions that had to be filled to run the new government and to make us, the United States, again, united. And, of course, there were setbacks for blacks. We talked about black codes already, um, but there was just this overall hostility toward blacks in the South, and in different ways this reared its head, like uh, the black codes, Jim Crow laws, and the Ku Klux Klan. It began in Tennessee in 1866 as a white organization to keep blacks down, to keep them quiet, and just there was this tension for the next hundred years at least even but i mean you can there's still tension today even where blacks are considered to not have as many rights or to be they should not be protected people believe um they and they can be intimidated and so through violence shootings hangings burnings it's all you has been used to terrorize blacks after the Civil War. So you're going to have a whole lifetime of learning about how the Civil War has impacted the South and impacted the North and impacted our nation. This is just a very short introduction to it. And I wish you luck and study hard.